This is a podcast by the Business Times, presented by UOB. The numbers don't lie. The spending power of women is on the rise. According to Nielsen, by 2028, women will own 75% of the world's discretionary spending. From household purchases to travel and leisure to buying new homes, women are the decision makers. Nevertheless, the gender pay gap persists, and women continue to shoulder most of the burden of caregiving. With the cost of living continuing to rise, how are financial services catering to the needs of the modern woman? To help us answer this and other questions, our guest today is Jacqueline Tan, Managing Director, Group Head, Personal Financial Services, UOB. Welcome to the Business Times Future of Finance podcast. I'm Lee Kim Siang. Jacqueline, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Kim Siang. So what are some of the unique financial needs and goals women often face? You know, that's really a great question. So what we have observed is that women today, we play multifaceted roles uh, in the society, from nurturing their families to paving careers. And of course, with that comes expectations, right? Whether you're a career woman, whether you're a homemaker, whether you're a mother or whether you're a daughter. And as their life stages and lifestyles evolve, so do their financial needs and preferences. And with the growing affluence, as well as when women gain financial independence, they save, they invest more, and also they seek to protect what they love and what they have built. So some considerations that are really unique to women when it comes to planning for their finances that we've observed. First things first, women do have longer life expectancies than men. Mm -hmm. And with that, the ability to save enough to sustain a possibly longer retirement journey is one big consideration. Then, of course, you also have healthcare costs where there are additional costs to consider when you go through different life stages, for example, pregnancy costs, childbirth, childcare, or even elderly care. And the third trend that we saw as well, career breaks, the possibility of women taking time off work to perhaps fulfill either parental or caregiver responsibilities. So with these considerations, it is important now more than ever for women to really plan ahead and build a financial security for themselves so that their goals and financial future can stay resilient. So for example, it's important to start planning early because you have time on your side and the power of compounding uh, is important. The other, which is also having good money management and having emergency funds for perhaps six months worth of expenses. So all these are great financial tips and considerations for women, especially. So how are some of these unique considerations shaped the way women prioritize and plan for their finances? You know, Kim Siang, today, women really truly play a critical role in driving economic development. They are definitely generating more wealth than ever before and gaining economic influences, especially in the roles of consumers, wealth accumulators, as well as investors. And some of the trends that we have observed, women are starting younger when it comes to kickstarting their financial journey. So based on some of the data that we have, have observed, right? Young female customers under the age of 20 years has grown almost 50% in 2023 versus three years ago. Mm. And when we talk about the rising affluence, women are also becoming more financial savvy. And we have observed approximately 60% of women holding financial products like insurance as well as investment products. And when we think about savings as a whole, we do see women accumulating more savings. In fact, the asset under management, we've seen a growth of close to 30%. And the average AUM per customer has also grown close to 10%. So aside from investing, savings, and starting at a younger age, the other thing that we saw, which was also very encouraging, is really women driving the economy with the increased purchasing power. And we have seen spendings on our UOB credit cards grown more than 40% and is faster than the overall average of the portfolio. So if I look at it in summary, women today becoming more financially independent, working towards their aspirational life goals, pursuing lifestyle experiences and building savings for the future. So these are 
definitely very encouraging trends altogether. You mentioned that the purchasing power has gone up. Although women are contributing more to their household incomes than ever before, traditional gender roles mean that they're still taking a back seat when it comes to financial decisions. How can we help women gain more confidence in managing their finances and be financially independent? You know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because our data actually showed that women are more financially savvy than the typical stereotypes that may portray them to be. So in fact, overall, whether it's men or for women, financial awareness, literacy is key in really making the right financial decisions. And for us at UOB, we have been empowering women and very proud in doing so for the past 35 years, helping them live, save and plan better with tailored and progressive female-centric solutions to help meet their financial needs as well as preferences. So for example, recently, we refreshed our UOB Ladies Credit Card as well as Savings Account with a new synergized proposition that rewards our customers with more than when they save as well as when they spend. And it's not only about that. We also drive meaningful data-driven AI insights via our UOB Tomorrow app that nudges our customers based on their financial habits as well as preferences to give them tips on how they can manage their money better. So for example, what additional actions that you can take to earn higher interest or even save more when you spend. And we find these meaningful engagement that we have seen high interactions from our customers overall. Still to come, the unique benefits of women-only cards. This episode of Future of Finance is presented by UOB. And now, back to our podcast. Thank you for staying with us. This is the Future of Finance. I'm Lee Kim Siang, and I've been speaking with Jacqueline Tan from UOB. When it comes to spending power, women take the lead. What are you seeing in terms of spending patterns with women in Singapore? You know, that's a great question. The spending power and purchasing power of women have certainly grown over the years. Uh, and we have seen a strong growth overall. And the top spend categories for female card holders are retail, which is mainly in fashion, dining, as well as travel. And the two categories that certainly really outperformed in terms of growth was dining at 85% and travel close to 50%. And one really interesting category, Kim Siang, that we saw was the mm. entertainment category. Also resonating with the fact that, you know, post the pandemic, people are also spending or indulging more in experiences. So entertainment was a category that we saw a strong growth. In fact, 71% growth over the same period. Also a possible attribution to the fact that we brought some international acts early this year. In Taylor fact, Swift. In, yeah, like Taylor Swift. And it's interesting that you mentioned Taylor Swift. Mm. Uh, when we look back at some of the data, almost 65% of the Singapore customers that purchase tickets for the Taylor Swift concert, you know, during the July 5th pre-sale or even the 7th July general sale, they were mm -hmm. all females. So that was the interesting statistics that we saw. Why is there a need for female-only cards and what unique benefits does it offer compared with gender-neutral ones? You know, we truly recognize the unique segment needs and we respect each woman's individuality with regards to their preferences, their passions, their purpose. And at UOB, we are committed to really helping them fulfill their aspirations. And through research as well as data, we do recognize and can identify lifestyle categories that resonates with our card holders. And that's the reason why we've included benefits and privileges that are more women-centric in our UOB Ladies Card. So for example, year-long deals on exclusive women health screening packages or even health and beauty packages. And in addition, something that's extremely unique, for example, our Lady Solitaire, our card holders are able to choose two preferred reward categories that they want to earn more rewards on. Mm -hmm. So there is a choice of whether it's travel, whether it's dining, whether it's beauty, wellness, family, fashion, transport or entertainment. They can choose the two that resonates with them the most and they can earn up to 10 times reward points. And on top of that, having the flexibility to be able to switch those choices every quarter. And we have found that this feature particularly to choose and switch based on what resonates with you 
give women the empowerment as well as the choice to live really the life that they want based on their lifestyle spending habits. And recently, we have also strengthened the proposition with an unstoppable pairing. So which means coupling the UOB Ladies Card together with the Ladies Savings Account, where we reward our customers with even more when they save and spend with us. So just now when I spoke about 10 times more reward points on the category of their choice, mm -hmm. with the UOB Savings Account, you can get up to 25 times more as they grow their savings and indulge in more of what they love. So we are very excited with this combination. And since the launch just, you know, two weeks, I think we've seen great acquisition momentum, which also means that we're tailoring to the lifestyle preferences of the client segment that we serve. And it's our continued commitment towards supporting women as a whole, given their unique segment preferences on their financial journey, so they can live better, spend better, save better, and really indulge in what matters to them the most. Thank you for sharing your insights with us, Jacqueline. Thank you, Kim Siang, and thank you for the time, and thanks for having me. Most welcome. I'm Lee Kim Siang. Join us next time for more on the future of finance. This episode of Future of Finance was presented by UOB. Find more BT podcasts at businesstimes.com.sg slash podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is meant to provide general information only. SPH Media accepts no liability for loss arising from any reliance on the podcast or use of third parties' products and services. Please consult professional advisors for independent advice.